welcome to today's interview. Uh, we have John here today. It's an honor to be interviewing you and learning from you. <laughs> Great. Uh, I mean, super excited to be here post-pandemic physically. It's a completely different uh, feeling. Really happy to have you, Dunia, as well, uh, interviewing me. Very excited. Same here. <laughs> yes, very exciting. Um, so let's talk about InstaShop. First question for you is, what has been the major impact of the pandemic for InstaShop and the whole demand on-demand delivery industry in general? Okay, fantastic. I would probably start from analyzing a little bit the industry itself. So it's been a really crazy year. I think a really crazy last 18 months. It's been super transformational for the industry and obviously for the world as well. Uh, there's two main components that really impacted the industry and I think we understand. One thing has to do with adaptation, right? So we understand that users now are adopting grocery online, shopping much more faster. And the, th the second really exciting component and the drastic change that we see is has to do with competitive intensity. So, so many different players from every single industry really see the opportunity, they see the market size, and they try to, dodge, to jump into that and take a, a little bit of the market share. Now, that's in a way, microscopically, it's quite good. It steers innovation, and innovation and comp a competitive spirit is really what drives us as well. Um, when it comes to InstaShop specifically, obviously, um, We've been doing groceries from 2015. We've been more than doubling year on year, so it's not something that, uh, it's not like we needed more growth. We are already constantly uh, battling to manage the growth that we, we were already experiencing. The pandemic gave us a, very, a significant uh, uh, hike. We maintained that growth, and from that point onwards, uh, we continued growing. So uh, if you balance, obviously, the two effects of a market size increase and a competitive intensity increase. Overall, the effect is kind of neutral uh, on us. Thank you. So how would you answer uh, the future of the physical supermarkets? How do you see it? What is the future of physical supermarkets? OK, so that's a really interesting question. I'll tell you why it's interesting. Because it would have a completely different answer 12 or 18 months ago, right? Today, physical supermarkets do face an existential threat. That's, that's, that's an absolute clear thing, and it needs, it needs a very important full stop there. Um, what we're f seeing today is the, the emerging of dark stores. We're seeing billions of dollars pumped into these uh, new business models, and uh, they're growing, they're mustering all over the world in an extremely rapid uh, way. What, but the most important thing that many people need to understand is what is, what really is a dark store? For me and the way I see it, the dark store is the next stage of physical supermarkets. So we, we, we need to understand and retailers need to understand, the industry needs to understand that there's the, a supermarket 2.0 and we need to consider that. What is it? It's a supermarket you don't have to walk in. It's a supermarket that's tech enabled and it's a supermarket that has a very, very strong last mile solution. So that is, that is a really, really important uh, threat. So if I had to answer your question very directly, which is, will physical supermarkets basically survive? I would say that physical supermarkets won't survive, but physical supermarket brands will survive. But that, of course, has to do with their internal strategy and general tactics. So uh, let's deep dive on how can physical supermarkets survive and thrive considering that you've mentioned all about the digital transformation that's happening in the industry. Let, let's take it step by step. We all understand the industry. We all understand dark stores. We all understand the dynamics of how could a physical supermarket enter potential or not enter into the, in the technological era and build their own thing or not. That ha that we, those discussions we had. From my experience and my understanding, the single best and most sustainable way for a, super, for a physical supermarket to survive and thrive in the digital era is to partner with and really partner, so create a very strong partnership, an integrated partnership with a trustworthy marketplace. That's, that's, that's quite a, a, a tricky thing to achieve. It's much easier said than done. So how do you find the trustworthy marketplace? How do you balance uh, that relationship and how do you invest it, as, as I'm going to mention in a bit? So. Some of uh, uh, you know, our, our peers over here mentioned dark stores, right? That's, that's, 
that's a very tricky concept for, for retailers today. They've been, their business model has been for 200 years or more, I don't know, kind of similar. You have a customer that walks in, you have that experience. So, but in the reality, a dark store could be a Trojan horse and is a Trojan horse in terms of taking over the physical supermarket industry, right? There's, there's, there's no hiding uh, in that. So it's very tricky uh, to work, again, my view, it's very tricky to work with a marketplace that's very active in its own dark store uh, business because that what does that mean? It means that it can potentially leverage your know-how in terms of its own dark store operations, execution, assortment, and so on. So that's why also we have taken a very careful and strict approach when it comes to managing that business type. Um, yes, so other elements that actually will help... Uh, okay, so you have a physical supermarket. I think they need to go with a trustworthy marketplace, but that alone, creating a partnership is not enough. They need to transform themselves internally. What does internal digitalization mean for me? Besides the whole systems, the POS and stuff, they really have to finally have a proper out-of-stock system. <laughs> like we've heard that a lot, but it's, it's a huge pain of the industry. The retailers themselves are not addressing out-of-stock, which is a huge problem. It needs to happen. Finally, retailers have to understand that the competitive intensity within the grocery delivery and online grocery uh, realm has become extremely, extremely intense. Uh, so, at this point, a mindset of top performance is an absolute necessity. There's no survival in online groceries today if there's not an extreme urgency and, and a strong thrive to execute the user's order, uh, ideally, uh, as, as optimum as possible. So if, if I put all these together, I think there's, there's a way for uh, physical supermarket brands to survive in the long term and thrive. I think we understood the difference. Um, and uh, hopefully um, you're right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so InstaShop has been a key player uh, in the on-demand industry. We all know that. So how will InstaShop maintain its competitive advantage um, in the future? Great. Um, that's a very interesting question again because it's been so transformative the last 18 months for us, for me, for, for our team. So we've been on a journey that's been quite organic. We started again in 2015. Uh, we went through a, a, a beautiful transformation phase. We really understand the industry. So we kind of, in the UAE, we pioneered so, and, and globally, we pioneered a lot of innovation that still is, is uh, not copied. So I would say we have a very strong know-how and understanding of, of the online grocery industry. Uh, that's a very important component of why, why we continue to, to grow and uh, progress. The second thing has to do with our culture and our mentality when it comes to partnerships. So our culture internally is a culture that is driven by performance. It's a very honest culture, and it really reflects to our partners. So with our partners, we develop straightforward, honest relationships, and that really creates alignment of interest. And alignment of interest is extremely critical in order to create a, a solid collaboration that actually functions and delivers the right performance uh, to the end user. Um, besides culture, I think technology, which, which is a little bit related, we have a very strong uh, technology team, we have, a very strong, uh, we have very strong technological solutions, uh, and those really give us a, a, a mid-slash-long-term uh, head start versus our peer competitors. And finally, what I would say is that generally, um, we, we just never uh, calm down. We continuously try to innovate in every possible area of business that really helps us uh, and contributes to our growth.